Hi, my name is Stacy Brooke, and I am the founder and chief advisor at College Essay Advisors. And today I am going to walk you through the new 2017 2018 common application, which is finally out. There's been a lot of speculation about what changes might or might not be included this year. How would the Common App respond to some of the features offered by the Coalition, for example? How might they make an applicant's life easier or harder? We are about to find out. So this is the home screen that you are going to see when you go to the Common Application. You're going to click this Apply Now button or this Login button. I have logged into the Common Application already. I am going to click to the screen that I've logged in on. Um, even if you've already signed up for the Common App, the first thing we're actually going to recommend that you do is sign up for a brand new Google account um, specifically devoted to the college application process. I'm going to explain why this will come in handy later, but for now, just trust us, do it. Um, otherwise, you're going to sign into the Common Application. This is going to be pretty self-explanatory. If you already have had a Common App account before this year's refresh, you will be able to carry that account over along with your school list to the new platform. Otherwise, simply enter your email address, add in the basic info, and eventually you're going to land on this main screen. Um, when you first sign in, if your account is new, you won't have any schools listed here. Uh, and we're going to teach you how to come back and build your list in a few. But first, we are going to go to this main common application section. Um, this section is sort of why the common app exists in the first place. Um, it is where most of your uh, information is going to go that's going to be shared between schools. Um, and there are a few exceptions to that, which we will get to, but first we're just going to go through all of these sections one by one to show you what the Common App is going to ask you for. So in this first tab, this is the Profile tab, just some very basic contact information. Um, for each of these sections you're going to see there is a little tutorial video. Um, so if you click this, it's going to open up a video that's going to have some nice music to it. You can jam out. Uh, or you could not. <laughs> and uh, you're going to fill in all of this information. We've watched a couple of these uh, profile, I'm sorry, a couple of these tutorial videos. They actually are pretty helpful if you don't know, for example, you know, what exactly should uh, be going into your family or education section. So definitely take advantage of those. So when you click on this education section, uh, this is where you are going to list your, um, your school that you're attending, uh, your counselor information. Down here, you're also going to open up tabs for any other secondary schools you've attended. Um, if you've had college or university experience already, this is where you can enter that. Um, this grade section is a section that is new uh, in the Common App this year in that it is uh, a universal place for you to self-enter grades if that's something that schools ask you for. Um, not very many schools do. USC is an example of a school that does. Uh, in the past, you would have to enter hand enter your grades in for USC in the supplement part of the application. Now you can just do it one time and share between uh, schools that request that from you. Um, your current or most recent courses, this is where you're go going to tell everybody what you're taking in school this year. Um, the honors is a pretty interesting section because it's a place for you to list some things that you've achieved. And we find it to be most useful for things like science fairs where maybe you don't want to put the science fair uh, that you you know won first place in in your activity section because it was only something that happened over the course of one day. Um, but you could use one of your five uh, honors uh, slots here to detail that you won first place uh, and you don't have to use an activity section. Um, I'm sorry, an activity slot for that particular honor. So this is an interesting thing to consider when you're sort of doling out what you're going to list on this application in terms of the things you've been involved in. Uh, Community-based organization is something that is not going to apply to everyone, but if it does, you definitely should fill it out. Indicate the number of community programs or organizations that have provided you with free assistance in your application process. And future plans is where you tell uh, the schools you're applying to what careers you're interested in and uh, what you want to do with your academic future. So profile, family, education, testing. Um, this is where you can self-report your testing this year. Um, I think that's also pretty self-explanatory. The activity section is really the first section where um, things start to get a little bit more in depth in terms of uh, what you need to sort of craft and create in your own head. 
um, before you submit. So you are going to have to, there are 10 activity slots total. You're going to have to find the 10 most influential, most important activities and, and put them in this section. Um, the trick, as you, you'll see, we've been experimenting for how many words do you have available for this, is that you have a very short, um, you have a very low word count for these and uh, a very small space in which to for example, describe your leadership position um, or describe the activity itself. You're going to have 50 characters uh, for the position, leadership, description, and organization name, and you're going to have 150 characters to describe the activity, um, the recognition you received, et cetera. Um, so you're going to see nine of 10 available. You're going to have nine more after you fill in this activity. And one more thing I wanted to mention about this is you can um, sort of play with the order of how these things are displayed. And I would put the most uh, influential, most important activities to you at the top and make sure they're listed first. So go in descending order of uh, importance in your life and world. We come to the writing section, which of course is our favorite here at College Essay Advisors. We um, you know, we spend a lot of time in this part of the application. Um, well, Interestingly, so this was a feature last year, but it's very clear in the way that it's mapped out this year, you see the schools for which this writing section of the common application, this personal statement is required. Um, should you submit a personal statement to a school that doesn't require it? Absolutely, 100%. It shouldn't even be a question. You're going to have to write the essay to submit it to all of these uh, other schools that require it anyway. Um, if you have even an optional opportunity to talk to admissions, um, you know, speak to them in your own voice, tell them something else about yourself that they might not otherwise know uh, from other areas of your application, you definitely should take it. Um, so we have known for a few months now what the Common App essay prompts are. Here they are laid out in all their glory. There are seven of them. You're going to choose one when you choose it. You're going to just mark it like that. And then you are going to put the text of your essay into this little text box. Um, some cool things about updated features this year. So um, first of all, you get a minimum and a maximum word count sort of mapped out for you uh, at the bottom of each of these essay text box. And as, as far as we can see so far, that is consistent throughout the application, um, which makes life a lot easier for people who uh, were wondering last year, um, you know, what the minimum and maximum word counts were for various supplements. But uh, you can also see the words entered in real time. So you know how much space you have left uh, as you type things out. So this is the sort of this is the, the smaller truncated version of the window that you can work in. You can also click this little box, expand to widescreen, and you'll see you have a lot more space to type. Um, there are limited style options with uh, what you can do with this personal statement. They, the Common App limits you to bold, italic, or underlining, um, which is actually, I think, totally fine because it sort of makes students rely on the power of the words as opposed to, um, you know, the style of how things are laid out. Another interesting thing to note is that uh, there are no tabs. Paragraphs are separated by, uh, by lines between, between the paragraphs. So that's just something to know um, if you are drafting this in Word or in Google Docs, which I do recommend. Um, you know, sometimes it helps to, see, to start mapping things out the way they're going to be mapped out ultimately in the, uh, the Common App before you submit. Um, so I did just mention it, but I'm going to reiterate that I definitely think it's a wise move for you to draft your essays in a real word processing program. Um, draft in Word, draft in Google Docs, draft in something that's going to back up your work as you uh, as you edit it. I know I, I know people who have had their essays disappear on them when they work on them in the Common App, um, and I, I don't think that there is a backup. Um, situation built into this this year. So no matter what, I would recommend that you uh, that you do take advantage of word processing apps. There's also spell check and a, a hundred other um, you know advantages to working in in something that is actually meant for word processing. And the Common App sort of makes it easy for you to work in Google Docs specifically this year um, and then to import it into the Common App because one of the, the biggest and best features of this new uh, platform is that there is full integration with Google Docs. It's actually pretty awesome. Um, so I mentioned earlier that I recommend that uh, you sign up for a brand new application-specific Google account before you even start applying on the common application. And this is the reason why. So 
if you were going to use Google Docs and take advantage of the integration with the common application, when you click on this little Google, I keep saying Google Docs, I, Docs, I mean Google Drive, um, <laughs> which, which uh, in its smaller form, in its document form is Google Docs. Um, this integration with Google Drive, if you click on this Google Drive um, icon, it is going to ask you, the application is going to ask you, replace current answer. By proceeding, we will replace your current answer with text from the Google document you select. If you say OK, if you are working in the common application and you are also signed into your Google account, um, up will come all of the document options available to you in Google Drive. Right now, this, uh, this Google Drive account that I created specifically for our application purposes only has due documents in it. Um, and the reason why I recommend that uh, you use a new fresh account is because even though uh, schools you apply to and the people that you, you share this application with won't be able to see these, um, won't be able to see anything in your Google Docs account, it's still, I think is wise to separate the rest of your life, even the rest of your assignments, just for the sake of clarification. Um, you just sort of want to keep this clean and make sure only the things that are related to your app specific application process are available to you in this particular Google account that you're working from. So right now I am going to select this, the common app is live file. In the, the former version of, uh, of this document I was working on uh, that I typed into the text box, I typed the common app is out. So when I click on the common app is live, all of this changed to the common app is live. And we know it works because I also stylized some of the text from within that Google Doc and all of the stylized text comes through as bolded, as italicized, as underlined. So all of that carries over as long as you're using things that are actually supported by the common application, which are those three, um, those three styles. So uh, it's, it's just fascinating to know that that actually works. It's pretty cool. Um, you also obviously could just cut and paste the text if you feel more comfortable operating that way. But it's a fun new little trick that uh, the common app provides for you. So I'm imagining that a lot of people will want to take advantage of that. Okay, so we are back in the Common App. We have seen what the personal statement is going to be like when we when we stick it into that text box. Disciplinary history, pretty self-explanatory. Um, there is also the additional information section, which if you click yes, you do want to provide details of circumstances or qualifications not reflected in the application. This new text box will appear, um, and then it, it operates essentially the same way as the personal statement box that we just went through. So that is the basic layout of the common applications sort of main structure. Um, these are all of the elements that are going to be shared between, uh, between schools as you apply to them um, one by one. This is the application information that's going to carry over. You filled out the main sections of the application. How do you see what additional materials your target schools might require? So let's get to the school specific parts of this application. Um, so how do you add a school to your list? We have this nifty dashboard. When you first come in, eventually schools will be added to it. But how do you get these schools on there? So in this little college search bar, if you type in the name of a school, it will bring up anything that is relevant and matches the search. You can check the box and add it to your list. You can immediately go there by clicking this My Colleges tab. And the two places where you can access information about school-specific um, the school specific parts of your application are here in this My Colleges tab and here in this dashboard. The dashboard is uh, a bit more basic in terms of what it's going to show you. Eventually, these deadlines are going to be filled in. Um, these writing requirements, if you click on them, they kind of open up and you can see um, that there are quote unquote college questions that are required. It says there's no writing supplement. We're going to get into that in, in a second. Um, for Boston University and the Common App Personal Essay is required. So this just sort of gives you a little bit of a bird's eye view of what might be required for your uh, for, for each of these schools. But the real detailed information you get into when you click into this My Colleges tab. And right now we're looking at the tab for Boston University, my alma mater, yay be you. And, uh, and we're going to just take a look at this opening screen, which each of these schools is going to show you as you click on these schools in turn. Um, 
but just to sort of quickly go through what you might glean from this. Um, one, the application deadlines. It tells you when early decision is, regular decision, early decision two, um, and early admission for juniors only. Uh, it also gives you your application fees. It tells you your, tells you your standardized test policy. So uh, BU requires it, uh, the SAT without the essay or the ACT without the essay. So those are just good things to know. Um, it also tells you what kinds of reports and recommendations are required. And perhaps most importantly, at least as far as we're concerned, it tells you what the writing requirements are. So this is where things get interesting because essays, as, as we consider them, essentially any sort of more extensive writing component to the application is not always listed as a writing supplement. These schools sort of define these, these questions they have you answer uh, a little bit loosely. So you're going to want to make sure to click on these college questions and you can access them a number of ways. You can, you can click through that link that I just sent you, that I just showed you. You can also click on questions here and you're going to get some general questions and another one of those sort of drop down menus. And here you're going to see there, there is an essay questions bar that opens. Um, so one of the main things that, and we're going to show you a couple of examples that you're going to want to do is make sure you poke around quite a bit in each of these supplements to see where might these supplemental essay questions be hiding. Because when you when you think you are finished with all of your essays and then you start filling out the general information uh, for your for your target schools and you see random essays pop up out of the blue, um, it is slightly demoralizing if you think you're done already. So as much as you can, um, you know, especially as you first start to poke around, just sort of try to find all of the the secret essays in the nooks and crannies that we're going to show you. Um, just to go through sort of what BU is throwing at you here, um, you have essay questions. This is one, uh, what about being a student at Boston University most excites you? This is something that we call a why essay. Why do you want to go here, essentially? Um, and it has the layout of one of those text boxes that we encountered earlier for the personal statement. It also has an additional information essay that's optional that has another nifty uh, feature that the Common App has added this year, which is they will allow you to attach documents. So you can attach something from uh, your computer directly, a Word document, a PDF, or you can attach something for Google Drive, from Google Drive, excuse me. And uh, I'm going to show you how to do this when we get to the Harvard application. But it is uh, it is a very, uh, it's just an interesting thing that they have added because you can both import things from Google Docs in some cases, and you can also attach documents. Um, when you attach them, they are going to actually automatically convert to PDFs, um, which I think is probably comforting to most in that once, you're uplo once you upload them and they have become PDFs, they are unchangeable. Um, it's not like an admissions officer could open up a Word document and then accidentally, you know, add a period while they were uh, wiping the dust from their computer. Um, so that is that. This is uh, this is how Boston University has decided to incorporate their essay questions. Again, it's listed under questions, not listed under writing supplements. Let's look at Harvard for a second. So we look at this first page, take a glance. There is something listed under the writing supplement. It says it's optional. We don't believe in optional essays. We believe if you have an opportunity to write something else to admissions, you should definitely take that. Um, and Harvard's question is relatively open-ended. They also allow you to attach, I'm going to remove the thing that I attached earlier so I can show you how to attach it again. They allow you to attach a, um, a document to this. So they're not asking you to paste something into a text box. They are just asking you to, again, go to Google Drive, select your Harvard supplement file. You check to make sure it looks exactly the way you want it to look. You confirm. You click to affirm this is correct. And then, as I said before, this is going to turn itself into a PDF. So now we've addressed sort of what happens when you find a, or how to find a writing assignment that's kind of buried in the question section. Um, we have seen what it looks like when uh, a writing supplement is actually sort of in this writing supplement section, which you can find in this sidebar or if you scroll down. So that's what it looks like when a when a supplemental essay is actually listed in this writing section. Um, but just because a school doesn't list a writing requirement, um, you know, in the questions 
or in the writing supplement section doesn't mean it isn't buried somewhere. Um, sometimes, and there are a couple of cases of this that are, have been sort of consistent from year to year, but uh, sometimes it helps to look in the, there is no writing section here for Vanderbilt, but if you look in the activity section, there is a space for you to elaborate on one of your extracurricular activities or work experiences. There's also a place for you to submit your resume. So that's going to work very similarly to the Harvard essay that we just uploaded. Um, again, just make sure to poke around in all sections of all of these supplements to find these, uh, these essays that will rear their ugly heads at the last moment if you don't, uh, you know, if you don't dig around for them now. Um, in, uh, in another sort of interesting case that we've seen happen from time to time. Sometimes these writing supplement sections don't open up until you complete some of the questions within the um, this main part of the supplement. So before I went into Cornell and answered and answered some questions about which college or school I was applying to. I chose arts and sciences, which anticipated major within the college or school you've chosen. I chose astronomy. Um, and, uh, and once I selected the answers to both of those questions and I hit continue, this writing supplement section um, came down for me. It appeared. <laughs> it appeared out of magic. And, uh, and now the question that is specific to arts and sciences is here for me to answer. One more clue to point out uh, which this is new for this year because I I, uh, I know that it was very hard for most people to find that Cornell essay last year. But under this writing supplement um, category for Cornell, it tells you that uh, based on your selection of a college or school in the academic section, you will be required to complete an additional writing question. So I'm expecting there will be more of these tips and, and clues around for us to follow this year, um, you know, as the Common App tries to address the frustration of previous applicants. Um, so be on the lookout for those things. Uh, it seems like they've done a really good job this year of, uh, of clarifying some things that have not been so clear in the past. So look out for that stuff. A few last notes while we're within this application. Um, these sidebars, this instruction and help section, instructions and help section, um, has some pretty useful information in it, and it changes depending on which um, which tab you're in. So just something to, to play around with, an application term dictionary, if you don't sort of understand the terminology that's the being used, what are the writing requirements, that's some place that's going to help you sort of wrap your head around what you should be looking for and what's required. Um, so you, you have a lot of information at your fingertips, and I'm going to show you even more places to get, um, to get help for your frequently asked questions in just a second. I also wanted to show you one of the features that people on the comment that people are have been talking about a new edition for this year. Um, so under the mycologist section in this recommenders section, you can for each school invite your recommenders and invite advisors um, and it makes this process a little bit more integrated for school counselors in terms of them reviewing your applications. This is going to send a read-only read only access to the people that you invite. Um, it sort of mimics one of the features that came out in the coalition last year, which just sort of allows for um, you know some sharing and additional uh, modes of feedback to go back and forth. So that's something that I'm sure people will be exploring in terms of its functionality, potential limitations, um, etc. I also wanted to point out these financial aid resources. Um, the Common App has a lot of information here for people who are applying for financial aid. So if that's something that impacts you, definitely check out this section. And finally, we have heard uh, that there are going to be deadline alerts. So it is possible you will be getting emails emails from the Common Application when these deadlines come up. Um, that would be pretty awesome just in terms of having, uh, in addition to having your, your parents and your teachers and your counselors keep you on track, the Common App is going to help you do that too um, with any luck. So those are the basic features of the Common Application. A lot of things are very self-explanatory this year, especially compared to past years. I feel like the, the Common App did a really good job. They've been ironing out the kinks. We're very excited about this new uh, version of the platform, and we think uh, we think it's going to be pretty easy to use this year. Um, I also just wanted to 
take a peek again at the homepage of the Common Application. This is what you see before you log in because it is a wellspring of information, um, you know, both for students and parents. So uh, they have this cool feature where you can explore colleges. You can type in the name Boston University. Hi. You can type in the name of a college and if you click on it, it will give you a whole bunch of stats. It'll give you contact information for the admissions office, um, top reasons to go to BU, some testimonials. So if you're, if you're just starting to dip your toe into the college search, that's a really interesting tool for you. Um, for the virtual counselor, there are tons of videos that help you just uh, wrap your head around the task at hand. So that's an, another thing that I would I would recommend people poke around in. And then I also like this um, this plan ahead feature because it gives you a little bit more information. Here's some outtakes from the virtual counselor, but a little bit more information about um, you know what you might need to do at various phases of the application process. So it tells you what you might need to prepare for in ninth grade and 10th grade and 11th grade, probably uh, for most people that are watching this right now who are applying this year, this 12th grade um, section is gonna be most applicable to you. But again, there are, there are just so many resources for you here. Definitely poke around, take advantage of them. Um, and, uh, and we are very excited for this application season. Uh, feel free to check out additional uh, videos of ours on YouTube if you're looking for more information. We have guides to all of the common application essay prompts. If that's something that you are starting to consider, definitely check out our videos. We help break down each of these prompts, tell you what they're really asking, um, help you brainstorm, and, uh, and get you ready for an awesome application season. Leave questions in the comments section. Definitely subscribe to our channel. And thank you so much for watching.